mine was due to giving away my vital force. Right. So that can be another cause of heart attack, believe it or not. So I just learned this at that time, and it was a very good lesson. Now, heart failure occurs when the heart is not able to pump blood through the body as well as it should, it, and it means, you know, the heart is our main pump, and if we don't pump the blood, as well as we can, the, the end organs, or the kidneys, the liver, the spleen, all these things don't get the blood they need, and it can even cause our legs not to get the blood that it needs. And signs of heart failure include shortness of breath, feeling like you can't get enough air, swelling of the feet, ankles, and legs, and extreme tiredness. Well, I had some of these, which meant I had a little bit of heart failure early on. When I got back from Yosemite, I had more vitality in my heart than I've ever had before, and it even sounded different. I didn't have the, the noise that I had from my bad blood vessels. So the one thing that happened spiritually is I was given a new heart, basically. And I haven't had chest pain since then. This has been uh, 2002 was when that happened. And I have not had any heart surgery, I haven't had anything happen, but I have had a perfect heart ever since. Isn't that interesting? So spiritually, we can change our hearts. Uh, heart arrhythmias and blocks. Uh, heart arrhythmia just means that the beat isn't nice and smooth, nice and uh, rhythmic, you know. Arrhythmia means not in a good rhythm. And so it changes the beat of the heart. Most people have dizziness, faint, out of breath, chest pains. And these changes in heartbeat are, for most people, harmless. But as you get older, you're, you can have arrhythmias, but you can also get what they call heart blockages. Now, I've found uh, in my practice that uh, over the years that uh, Coxsackie virus gets into the nerves of the heart and causes arrhythmias. And most time it starts out as a very fast heartbeat and then your heart gets tired and the nerves get blocked and so you get uh, trigeminy or bigeminy, different uh, types of heartbeats that aren't as healthy. And so you get tired, dizziness, faint, shorter breath, you know, all kinds of problems. And I found when I treat and get rid of these viruses out of the heart nerves, your heart starts beating more regularly again and they become healthier. So I've met a lot of people who have arrhythmias and blocks and you can actually clear those. Now, oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask you, the Ebola medicine you developed, you said it's for vi all viruses. Yes. Would that be good in the treatment of a heart thing? Yes. Yes, it would. Now, normally you have to treat it for about six months to get viruses out of the heart. Uh, six months to a year. And uh, I found the Coxsackie no so with the Ebola virus remedy works really well. So, so you've got a lot of physical things that can happen to the heart. Go ahead. Another thing, back to where you were before you got into this section about your emotional uh, energy. Thing. Yes. In two cases. I have seen people die from the old saying, died of a broken heart. Yes. In both cases, they were very tied to an individual that cut them off, I mean, without going into all the details. Yes. And literally, in the one case, when they did the autopsy on this friend, the heart had actually ruptured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Broken so heart. taking back the energy thing, I mean, this is part of, I think this person was giving so much of his energy away to that other individual, it literally killed him. Yes. Because it was being taken and not returned. I totally believe that. Totally believe that. Now, yes, go ahead. Um, sometimes over, over the last few years, and it, this could be long too, I will wake up from a deep sleep with my heart racing. Um, it would be considered tachycardia. You could have had a scary dream or some emotion released during your sleep, or you could have been visiting your other dimensional selves and going through, you know, 
uh, I experience a lot of uh, experiences where I'm actually in a battle in, in, on the other side and I wake up with those same kind of things. Uh, it's not a bad thing and it'll go back to normal once you calm yourself down. Uh, but I found a lot of us are fighting wars on the other side, you know, and we wake up and we're just pounded. And it's, it's not a bad thing, it's, you know, but uh, I found just love your heart. Just uh, one of the things I do uh, is say, peace be still to my, to my heart yeah, or my nervous system even, well, yeah. if it's going too fast. Yeah, because sometimes we go through energy storms. And Jesus, when he was on the Sea of Galilee with the disciples, he, uh, a storm came up and he was sleeping. And all the disciples thought they were going to be killed because the, the, their ship was taken on water and all kinds of stuff. And Jesus got up and said, you guys knew how to do this. Why are you waking me up? And and he literally raised his hands and he said, peace be still, and the storm just calmed right down. Well, I think that was a lesson for us in that when we're having a storm within our body or even our heart or our nervous system, just say, peace be still. And I do it three times. I say, peace be still, peace be still, peace be still. It'll calm my heart right down. It calms the nerves right down. Now, uh, last night, I was laying next to Vicki, and she must have got into contaminated with some glutens. And I said to her, hey, your, your nervous system is going crazy right now. And she says, how do you know? And I said, I can feel it, you know. And so I said, say, peace be still to your nervous system. And I've taught her this before, so she did. And immediately it calmed her nervous system down. Uh, we can do the same for our heart and any kind of fear. So uh, the heart is an interesting place. Uh, just like our solar plexus is the emotional center of the digestive area and of the body, uh, the heart is the love center. I really believe that our soul actually resides in our heart, in the middle of our body, and not in our brain. Like a lot of people think our soul is up in here, but I believe the soul is in the heart. And uh, if you ask a lot of mystics, they'll agree with that, that the heart center is the center of our soul and the center of love, because our soul is love. And all of our health and energy emanates from the heart through our soul, which is very interesting. That's why we heal ourselves, is we have to heal our soul. That's Go why ahead. they say listen to your heart. Yes. Don't listen to your brain that reasons everything. Yep, listen that, to your heart. You and so uh, the most damaging thing we can go into, believe it or not, is fear. Because fear takes love out of our body. Fear is one of the most powerful negative energies to take faith away, love away. You know, I mean, it's very powerful. And that's why uh, the news focuses on all the bad stuff going on because it focuses on fear and it gets our attention and lowers our vibration and causes all kinds of problems. But uh, it's interesting, because when we have faith and we bring love into our soul, it actually repairs our whole body. And if we could bring us to the point of having love all the time, we would raise our vibration high enough, we wouldn't have any diseases and problems. Okay, so. Let's go on to the next one. Fear and other emotions. The processes affect all of our energy centers. And emotions affect mainly the solar plexus, but emotions also affect the heart chakra. And a lot of stress-related diseases are due to uh, not enough minerals, not enough grounding to the earth. Like, I'm always up there floating around, so I have to remember to ground myself a lot. and. Uh, because it's very important. The throat and the other upper digestive tract, uh, this controls a lot of our voice and a lot of what we hear and, and smell and see. And then the uh, brain and higher functioning nerves control the eyes and the ears. And the, but the cardiovascular, the heart, the thymus, and lung, you know, that's our whole immune system, our love system, everything else. Now, 
getting back to the physical, mouth, tooth, and gum disease. Now, why did I put this slide in there? They found the condition of your mouth greatly affects your solar plexus and your, your uh, heart chakra. And so, if you've got mouth, tooth, or gum disease, you normally will get other diseases with your heart chakra and your uh, digestive system. Now, bleeding gums and heart disease, uh, they found that if you have bleeding gums, it's a sign of gingivitis, but it's also a sign of blood vessel fragility uh, throughout your body. So yes, it is a sign of arteritis, vasculitis, and heart disease, and possible bacterial infections. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, getting back to physical things, a typical bacteria, Streptococcus and Staph, are probably the worst bacteria to get into your body that cause heart disease and other diseases throughout the blood vessels in your body. Now, they can come in through the body through food, air, water, and settle into the circulatory system, and they attach to the intima, or the internal layer of the blood vessels, and they cause inflammation, and then our body tries to fight them, and it leads to injury of the blood vessels. We uh, put plaque on there, and and some of the plaque is cholesterol, and that's why doctors start believing that cholesterol causes heart disease, and they're really looking at only the inflammatory process. And a reduction of the surface area leading to blockage and or stroke, heart attack, and end organ damage. The plaques can break off, flow into the other organs, including the brain, causing ischemia, stroke, and, and or uh, you know, uh, problems with the brain and heart attacks. Now, the reason I talk about this is because it all starts with, with the mouth, believe it or not. Now, they have dropped chemtrails on us that have mycoplasma. Now, why did they start doing this? Because mycoplasma has an enzyme in it that can get into the lungs through the air. You get this mycoplasma in there, and it can deliver different things that they set against our bodies, like there's different viruses, and there's even nanobots that put inside of these mycobacteria. And they do cause circulatory problems and uh, heart disease. So that's why I bring that up, because my, atypical bacteria are one of the biggest causes of problems. So there's several, several types of bacteria consumed through the food, air, and water. They can cause problems, and cause blockages, stroke, heart attacks, and end organ damage. Mycoplasma, chlamydia, streptococcus, and staphylococcus, including MRSA, cause big time problems with the blood vessels and heart. The other thing that causes a lot of problem is they actually did a study back in 1973 showed helicobacter pylori, the same bug that causes ulcers in the stomach, can cause problems in the heart because it moves into the blood vessels, liver, pancreas, lungs, and it ca can cause ulcers in the blood vessels which cause plaque again to, to form. So, so, go ahead. Any of these things you're talking about, do they have anything to do with parasites? Absolutely. Absolutely. Parasites, I've found, can carry bad bacteria into the body through their bodies because they, they vibrate very low and they carry low vibrating bacteria that aren't good bacteria. The good bacteria actually vibrate good, they give us stuff, you know, they're very symbiotic with our body, they actually help us digest our food, produce uh, B vitamins, vitamin C, all kinds of stuff for our bodies, including vitamin D and K. And we'll go through that. But uh, so good bacteria vibrate at a higher vibration. Bad bacteria vibrate at a lower vibration, then they tend to infect parasites. When parasites get into our body and they start pooping, they poop out the bad bacteria, and the bad bacteria get into our body and cause problems. So that's why I do a lot of parasite cleansing, because their parasites are a vector for disease in our body. So uh, it's good to get them out of your body because they're very low vibrating. The other spiritual aspect of this is that the bad bacteria, oh good, it's still going. Uh, the bad bacteria, uh, the parasites bringing those bad bacteria and bad fungus into our body, uh, we gotta get rid of the vector. So you gotta get those parasites out of your body. Because if you don't, they'll just reseed you with 
the bad stuff. Now, uh, they found in the European Journal of Preventive Cardiology that within the coronary arteries of over 2,000 adults, so it's a pretty good study, free of cardiovascular disease, age 45 to 85 years old, they were followed over three years, and the ones who died of heart attacks, that, that got heart attacks during this time period, had chlamydia pneumoniae, which is another atypical type of bacteria during the period and it built more plaque in their coronary arteries. Uh, another study showed a link between this bacterium and coronary artery disease. C. pneumonia is known to increase the binding of white blood cells, macrophages, to the endothelial cells, and it causes a buildup of plaques and uh, causes heart disease. And the reason I'm bringing this stuff up is a lot of it is an infectious disease type thing. What they found is when you have love and you're projecting love, you're being kind to people, guess what your immune system does? It improves. It improves and it kills off all this bad stuff. Mm -hmm. So the best thing you can do for your heart is love people and be kind to people and you know be in that kind of role. Now. Vitamin D has been very, has been found to be very important. You know, they're even checking people's levels of vitamin D now. And they found 95% of Americans are low on vitamin D. And why is that? Because they tell you, all the dermatologists have scared us to death to go out in the sun and have our vitamin, uh, our cholesterol turned into vitamin D1, which the sun does through our skin. When you pack on all of the, the sunblock and you cover your body totally, you don't get any vitamin D at all. Because <laughs> the sun has not. to hit you the skin. Is that part of their plan to keep us sick and along with the food oh, yeah. and everything else? Absolutely. And you know, when I was in medical school, I knew vitamin D was good for your immune system. I knew vitamin D was good for everything. And, and when I got malignant melanoma at the age of 29, everybody told me, don't ever go out in the sun without putting sunblock on, cover your body up, do all this crap. And I was like, I can't believe you're telling me to not keep my levels of vitamin D up, you know? So anyway, they found vitamin D protects the endothelial cells that line the blood vessels from bad bacteria. They help, it helps the immune system attack the bad bacteria. And it increases nitrous oxide. You know, our big increase in high blood pressure is possibly due to lack of vitamin D. <laughs> it's very interesting. And the nitric oxide helps relax blood vessels, reducing damaging oxygen metabolites, free radicals, and it lowers your blood pressure. So taking vitamin D and getting out in the sun helps lower your blood pressure. So interesting. Now another role of vitamin D is in the vascular smooth muscle cells lining the blood vessels, they actually will grow and migrate to the interior wall. When you have a good amount of vitamin D, it blocks this from happening. Guess what else? Cancer develops these blood vessels that migrate also. So when you have high levels of vitamin D, cancer can't grow as well in your body. Isn't that interesting? So, you know, vitamin D is very important. And uh, it also helps the telomerase. Vitamin D helps your telomeres lengthen. Isn't that interesting? So vitamin D is, you know, a very important vitamin. Uh, it also helps with the clotting mechanism and keeps you from uh, forming clots when you're not supposed to. Now, uh, it's fascinating. Uh, nutrition, if you have good nutrition, you'll have plenty of vitamin D in your body. But most of us don't eat well. And when you're not eating any vegetables, because the best source of vitamin D is, is uh, vegetables, believe it or not. And it's, it's helped make, vitamin D is interesting. The sun makes the D1 in your skin. Then the D1 goes to your liver and it's converted to D2. Now, if your liver's full of fats and fungus and all this stuff because of our sad American diet, 